Thanksgiving, family and friends. Welcome to our first Sunday morning in July. It is time for our praise and worship if you stand to your feet and join in with us.
can give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Can I just lift up your hands and say, Lord, child of me?
turn down just a little bit. I want to thank God for the opportunity to stand before you today. I want to acknowledge also our church family who's here, Gateway Community Church, those of you that are here, just wave your hand. Amen. It's good to see you all today. New Beginning Church, it's good to see you all as well. Uh, after all that we've been through and uh, just in the recent weeks, what the enemy tried to do, but we declare victory and we are here in Jesus' name. Amen. And I uh, want to just acknowledge, I have to acknowledge those that are watching online. Uh, we do have quite a bit of people who watch us online and we had a little uh, issue this morning, a technical issue, getting on uh, our usual um, usual platform that we stream, but we are we are on today. So I want to acknowledge uh, those of you that are watching us online and New Beginning as well, those that are watching us as well. Uh, I also give honor to Pastor Davis in his absence. Amen. 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 Sister Davis, I pray that they're having a great time wherever they are, that they're relaxing, that they are enjoying life, and that uh, God is restoring and refreshing them. Uh, after today, my wife and I, my wife and I, we're going to go on vacation, so we're going to unplug for a little bit, and uh, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, as pastors, we do have to, uh, you know, get away sometimes. Sometimes we need to just unplug. All of us, actually, I say pastors, but all of us need to unplug. Even if that means you go to Galveston, get on the ferry, go to the other side, and come back. <laughs> Stick your head out in the wind. Let, let, you, let the wind blow through your scalp. Sometimes you need to do that. Jesus did that. Jesus got away. Yeah. We read about Jesus going off by himself into the mountains and spending time in prayer. And so uh, he would get away. And we call that, we got a name for it now. They call it self-care. Jesus practiced self-care. Somebody said self-care. Yeah, you care caring about others and caring about everybody else, you need to care for yourself sometimes. Amen. Sometimes you need to practice some self-care. Yeah. Say that again. Self-care. Yeah, self-care. Self-care. So uh, I do uh, honor God for the self-care opportunities for, for Pastor Davis and Sister Davis and uh, all of us at this time. It's a great, uh, we know this time of year is a little transition. Fourth of July is tomorrow and a lot of people are traveling, moving around and family reunion time. And, and, and so we are uh, we understand this time, this season of year, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to be together. And I, I am going to get to the word today, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and look at Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. We're just going to look at two verses. And uh, I'll honor all of you today, ministers, deacons, everybody uh, that's gathered in the house. If it is your custom to stand, we ask you to stand. Uh, for the reading of the word, we're going to look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. And uh, if you know, if you have the version app on your phone, your mobile device, you can follow the notes. Uh, those notes are posted there in version. If you do a search for events, uh, just go to the menu button and look for events and you will find Gabriel Community Church. Uh, you'll find the notes there. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. If you are there, say word. word. All right. Sound like the majority of you are there. It reads like this. Be anxious for nothing. We can just stop right there, right? That, that's a word for somebody right there. Be anxious for nothing. Somebody say nothing. nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And I just talked to you about self-care. Guess what? Today's message is called Be Anxious for Nothing. Be Anxious for Nothing. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Be Anxious for Nothing. One of the most common emotional struggles that people face today is anxiety. Uh -huh. 
And if we did a survey, a poll in here today, I'm sure a number of you would say, yes, I have been dealing with anxiety. I get anxious. Maybe there are anxiety attacks. But it's been researched and reported that anxiety disorders affect some 20 to 30 million people in America. So there's a good chance that somebody in here is dealing with anxiety. Somebody that may be watching online is dealing with anxiety. The fast pace of our society is too much for most of us to handle. You realize that before 20, 30 years ago, life was slower. Those of us that can remember life before the internet, remember how much slower life was before smartphones, before all of this stuff that connects us. The pace of life was slower and it was better in some cases for us because what we find is that we're overstimulated by information. You realize that in one day, you and I can get more information than our forefathers got in a whole lifetime. Yeah. On your phone, you can open up your phone and just look at all kinds of news and information. You can Google search pretty much anything you can think of. And that bombardment of information causes us at times to become overwhelmed. Our children are constantly on their phones. Our adults are constantly on their phones. <laughs> Current events make the future uncertain. We don't know what next year is going to look like. Hey, we don't know what the rest of this year is going to look like. We don't know. So many unprecedented things that are happening in our society. Who knows what 2023 is going to look like? In 2020 and 2021 brought some crazy stuff. 2022 has been okay, but it's almost like we're waiting for the shoe to drop, right? Wait, what's next? Uh, what's, what's next? See, the future is uncertain, and this can cause anxiety. Many of us are anxious about the future, anxious about events that haven't even happened yet, but could happen. We get anxiety over things that could happen, even in your personal life. What will your future look like? Your retirement, your health, your grown children. Anxiety causes physical problems. Anxiety makes people fearful and distressed. Anxiety and its cousin worry do their best to rob you from experiencing the life that God has promised you. You want me to say that again? Anxiety and its cousin worry. You know his cousin? How many of y'all know his cousin worry? Do their best to rob you from experiencing the life that God has promised you. If you are in bondage to anxiety, you struggle with anxiety, you struggle with worry, that will rob you of the life that God has promised you. Remember, Jesus said, he said, I leave my peace, my peace I give to you. God said, he said that he will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on him. So worry and anxiety are an attempt of the enemy to steal you from the peace, the shalom, the life that God wants you to live. Yes, sir. It will rob you. And the thing about being robbed is that you're helpless. Hmm. I've been held up at gunpoint before. It's a helpless skill. Yes, sir. Ain't much you can do. I don't know if you can. <laughs> Whatever you want. I was on the subway set. God got my, my ring, and, you know, off of my wallet. I'm off and you want a sandwich too? <laughs> You're helpless. And when you're struggling with anxiety, struggling with worry, mm. it will rob you. You become helpless. Paul had reason to feel anxious. Listen to this. You know where Paul was when he wrote this passage of scripture? Guess where he was? Anybody want to take a guess? Anybody know? Where was Paul? He was in prison. This dude was in prison. He didn't know whether he was going to be released or he was going to be put to death. He didn't know. But he he said this. He said, even there, in, in, as he encouraged the Philippians, he encouraged them with these words, be anxious. Wow, Paul, really? Really? 
Your life could be on the line and you're saying be anxious for nothing. Why is this? Because Paul understood something. Paul understood he had a connection with the Father. He had a connection with God through Jesus Christ. And so he could say these words because he knew that no matter what his future ended up being, that everything was going to be all right. He knew that no matter what the situation was, that he was going to be all right. And that God was going to work all things out for his good. Anybody know that all God's going to cause all things to work together yes, for your good? Yes. There are several things of note in this passage of scripture. Let's take a look at a few of them. First of all, there's a command to obey. The first thing he says here in verse 6, be anxious for nothing. So he's given a commandment. This is, this is an instruction mm -hmm. not to be anxious. He didn't say, I think you should not be anxious. He didn't say, maybe you, he didn't say, maybe you want to consider not being anxious. No, he said, no, be anxious for nothing. Don't, don't be anxious for anything. Uh -huh. That's what he's saying. Be anxious for nothing. It's a command. Here, it's an instruction for us not to be anxious. And I believe God is saying to the church today, be anxious for nothing or for no thing. Yeah. Because you got to remember, one thing you got to remember is that there is nothing that can separate you from yeah. God's love. Yeah. Remember Paul's words in Romans 8? He said nothing. He said uh, that tribulation or distress, that persecution... He said, that nakedness, no peril, no sword, famine, no sword. He said, and then he goes on to say, that I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, <laughs> nor that any created thing, yes. nor things present, nor things to come, shall separate me from yes, the love sir. of God. Yes, sir. See, Paul knew that God loved him. You got to remind yourself today that God, God loves you. Me. Somebody say, God loves me. God loves me. Yeah, you need to know that no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter what's happened to you in your life, that God still loves you. Yes, sir. Yes. And you may, may, may think sometimes that that that, uh, that you're not worthy of God's love, but you are worthy because God loves you. He said it in his word. And so Paul understood that God loved him and that the future was safe. No matter what happens, he knew that his future was safe because he knew God loved him. And so he could tell the church to be anxious for nothing. So there's a command. Here's the second thing, though. There's a course to follow. There's a command to obey, and then there's a course to follow. What's the course to follow? He says it right here, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, in other words, in every situation, uh -huh. what do you do? Pray. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So uh -huh. he gives us a course to follow to fight anxiety. First of all, it's prayer. We know what prayer is. It is speaking to God. But you know what? Prayer is also dialogue. Yeah. Prayer is not a monologue where you just tell God what you think and just tell God what you want. Prayer is allowing God to speak to you. Yes, sir. It's saying, God, speak to me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Give me understanding of what I need to do in this situation. It is, it, it is listening for the voice of God. And maybe you won't hear it in the time that you pray, but at some time along the way, God is going to speak to you. He's going to speak to you. He may speak to you through your spirit. He may speak to you through other people. He may speak to you through the word. And everything that's going to line up is going to confirm with the word. There is nothing that anybody or anything that will, will say that will go against the word of God. Okay? So so don't anybody, anybody come to you and say they got a word for you. And, and, and uh, nobody's ever heard. This is a totally new revelation. No, you, you, you say, no, thank you. I don't want to hear that. It all needs to line up with the word. But God will speak to you. God will speak to you if you ask him. He says, and James just says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask for it. So, so that means in every situation, any situation you face, you can say, God, give me the wisdom. If this is school, God, I need wisdom. If it's a situation dealing with relationships, God, I need your wisdom. Yes. If it's a situation dealing with finances, God, I need your wisdom. Yes. And he says he will give it to you and he won't hold back. That's what James said. He won't hold back. That's what prayer is. It's talking to God and allowing God to talk to you. But then there's another thing here he talks about, and that is supplication. Supplication is making those specific requests. 
It's a specific request. You know those specific requests when we pray for maybe for healing for a loved one, maybe for a situation on our jobs, maybe with our family, our children. But it's a specific situation. That's what supplication is. And guess what? I thank God we can ask him. We can come to him. You know, James said, and James it says, one, it says in James chapter 4, verse 3, it says that you ask and you don't receive because you're asking for the wrong reason. But in another verse in James, it also says, ask. He says, you have not because you ask not. Maybe there are some things in your life you don't have because you hadn't asked for it. So ask. God wants you to ask. In fact, in, in, in the Gospels, Jesus said, ask and you shall find. Seek and, uh, uh, seek and, no, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. God wants you to ask him. He wants you to ask him. He wants you to come to him and ask him for what you need and even for what you want. And it says in Psalm that he gives us the desires of our heart as we delight ourselves in him. Right. Everything you want may not go out over what he wants, but you can still ask him for it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. God's not going to get back. It's like if you, have, if you have children and your child comes to you and say, can I go outside or, or can, I, can I go here? And you say, no. But that don't mean they won't ask you for it. Yeah. Right? It don't mean that they can't ask you. Right. You can go to him and ask. He wants you to ask. That's what supplication is. But notice here also, it's prayer, supplication, and the third thing is what? With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. There is a praise component of prayer. Mm -hmm. There is a, an, an aspect of prayer that involves praise. Yeah. See, when we go to God, I, I like to say we go to God the first time we ask him for something. If you believe in God for, for a, a, a new house, for example, or, or a new job. God, I believe you for a job. Uh, I, 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 you know, I'm doing my part from the resume and applications, all of that. God, I need this job. Thank you. And then after that, I'm thanking him for it. Yeah. So you ask him the first time, but after that, you're thanking him for it. And you're thanking him that whatever he desires in that situation yeah. that is coming to pass. So you praise him in advance. Uh -huh. You don't wait for the battle to be over. You don't wait for the manifestation. Yeah. You don't wait for it to yeah. show up. You praise him in advance. Yeah. God, I thank you that it's already done in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. I thank you, God, that your will is being done in my yeah. life in Jesus' name. See, that's, that's where the Thanksgiving comes. That's where the Thanksgiving comes. So we pray, we make our supplications, and we give God thanks. Amen. And notice what he says is going to happen. The peace of God, which God. surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, through yeah. Christ Jesus. So prayer does a few things here. First of all, it replaces worry. It replaces worry. Instead of being careful and anxious, we are to pray continuously in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Paul says, he says, pray without ceasing. Yeah. That means nonstop prayer. That means we're to constantly be in the attitude of prayer. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that, you know, we're always on our knees. Now, Lord, I need you to come. To, no, but it, it, it's, it's saying that we're going to be open at any time. You could be driving down the freeway. I've done this many times, driving down the freeway. I see somebody stranded on the side of the road. Lord, bless them. Yeah. Get them yeah. off the road safely. God, protect them. Yeah. You know, I see something on the news. I'm praying. See, that's staying in the attitude of prayer. That's praying continuous. That's praying without ceasing. And when we pray without ceasing, it's going to replace worry. Because what is worry? Worry is meditation on the wrong information. You're focusing on the wrong things. And so instead of worrying, Think about what could happen. Oh, Lord, they found something. God said he sees something. He found something. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? My mama had it. My grandmother had it. Oh, Lord, what's going to happen? Instead of worrying about it, I'm going to say, God, I thank you, thank you. That, is, that, that there is healing, God, that your will is going to be done in this situation. Mm -hmm. I'm replacing the worry with prayer and praise. Yeah. Anybody follow me today? Yeah. So prayer replaces worry. I'm going to meditate not on negative information, but I'm going to meditate on the promises of God and the principles of God's word. Here's the next thing that prayer does. It reviews God's goodness. Prayer reviews God's goodness. When we pray, we remind ourselves of how good God is. Remember Jesus prayed when he taught the disciples how to pray. 
He said, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Yeah. What is that? That's worship. That's honoring the name of God. Yeah. Hallowed or holy is your name. There's worship that's involved. Worship comes from an English word, an old English word, worth. Ship. Yeah. W O R T H S H I P. Worship. What is worship? We are honoring God for who He is. Yes, sir. Because He's worthy. Hallelujah. Yes, Anybody know that He's yes, worthy? So when we come to God in prayer, we are honoring and we are, we are referencing Him. We're reviewing His goodness. Sometimes if you just start off in Thanksgiving, you won't even get to the other part. Yeah. If you just start thinking, just start uh -huh. thanking God. God, I thank you. Yes. Yes. For That's help. Right. For strength. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> and the whole thing you say, thank you that I'm cold in my right mind. And my yeah. mind is regulated. Yeah. You, know, you, you start thinking about these things. You start yeah. reviewing those things. Yeah. Reviewing the goodness of God. And before you realize that you have, you have taken your mind off of that which you were worried about. Yes, sir. Okay. So Amen. prayer reviews God's goodness. Another thing that prayer does is it requests help. Supplication and making requests mean that we are asking God for his help. That's specific. Again, I say that that is specific. Supplication is a specific request. But then here's the next thing. Prayer rests in peace. I said it replaces worry. It reviews God's goodness. It requests God's help. It also rests in peace. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rule and reign in our, in our lives if we're praying the way we need to. See, when we pray with thanksgiving, say, God, I thank you that it's done. Mm -hmm. Guess what we're doing? We're going to leave it there. Amen. And we're going to have peace. That whatever God decides. See, that's what Paul was. Yes, yes, Paul was there. Paul was like, God, whatever you decide yes. is all right with me. It is well it. with my soul. Yeah. It is well yeah. with my soul. Yeah. And he rests in peace. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to say that, it, it, I don't know if you any basketball fans and y'all are familiar with Steph Curry. I, I, I'm not the biggest Steph Curry fan, but, but, but Steph Curry, sometimes he gets to shoot that ball and, and sometimes he'll shoot the ball and he'll take off running down, 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 down the other end of the court because he already knows what's going in. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. He'll shoot that ball. I'm like, Steph, come on now, that's a little too much. <laughs> but he has confidence come on. that when he shot that ball, it's good. It's going in. It's good. See, you yeah. need to have confidence come when on. you pray. Come on. Yeah. And you yeah. pray in the name of Jesus and you declare yeah. your thanksgiving yeah. and your praise and, and you're reflecting on the goodness of God. You need to have confidence yeah. that your yeah. prayer yeah. is going to make it through yeah. and that whatever God has done, does, it's always it's all good. It's all good. Worry, oh, what could happen? What might happen? Lord, I oh, thank Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. It is well with my soul, God. Yeah. I thank you and I give you praise. Yeah. And you're causing all things to work together for my good. See, that's how you fight that anxiety. Yes, sir. Amen. That's how you fight that worry. Yeah. You're going to focus on what God is doing in your life, what He's already done. Yeah. As the song yeah. said, if He did it before, yeah. He can do it again. Yeah. Thank God. Back then is the same God as now. Yeah. So he's a good God. And you can rest in peace. Now having contentment. That's the last thing with this. There is a command to obey, a course to follow, and a contentment to experience. Yeah. Notice he says again. And the peace of God. Which surpasses all understanding. That means you can't even come. You, you should be falling apart right now. <laughs> but now you got peace. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just boggles your own mind. You're like, man, I should be falling apart right now. <laughs> the world just seems like, my world just seems like it's falling apart. I should be going crazy right now. But Thank you, I just have a feeling. And the songwriter said, I got a feeling. Everything is going to be all right. See, there's a peace that comes when you give it to God and you Go to him in prayer with thanksgiving. Right. Yeah, yeah. There was a peace yeah. which surpasses your understanding. It says, I, I like this, will guard your hearts yeah. and minds mm. through Christ Jesus. My dad passed at 54. Mm -hmm. 
He was a pastor. He was under some stress. Church was growing. He was doing a lot. And then, you know, the enemy tempts, you know, tries to put seeds in my head. But I stand on this scripture. Yeah. That God is gonna, yeah. gonna give me peace, which passes my understanding yeah. to God. Yeah. My heart and my mind. I gotta do what I need to do in the natural. I can't eat pork, pork rinds, pork skins, you know, <laughs> allowing myself to be stressed out. I gotta take care of myself, right? Gotta do what we have to do in the natural. But there's only so much you can do in the natural. At some point, you gotta say, God, I give it to you. It's yes, in right. your hands. Yes, right. It's in your hands, God. I thank you that it's already done. Now I've got peace yeah. that I can't even understand. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm tempted to be nervous. Sometimes I'm tempted to be fearful. But now I've got a peace that's yes, less my understanding. Yeah. To guard my heart and my mind. You realize so many people are struggling. And, you know, yeah. we talk about mental health now. Mm -hmm. Like never before. It's because a lot of people are struggling mentally. Struggling in their emotions. And it doesn't have to be that way. Yeah. If we would follow the course. Yeah. I'm not saying don't get help. Yeah. In some cases, you know, you may need medical attention. You may need to talk to somebody. I believe most people need therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I just believe that. I mean, church is great. I call church group therapy. It's good. Yeah. This is a group therapy session. Yeah, right. Whenever you come to the house of the Lord, it's group therapy. Yeah. But I believe some of us need some one-on-one. -on -one. We need to sit and talk to somebody. Yeah. They can help you process it. Yes, fellas, sometimes we need to do that too. Yeah. Somebody that can help you process all the stuff you've been through. You went through some stuff in your childhood. You may not even remember yeah. it. You buried it, but it's hurting you now. Yeah. That's another story. Another story. Come on. <laughs> sometimes you need that, that professional help. Yeah. Biblically based, I will say. Biblically based now. Based on the Bible, they tell you something that's not in the Word. You don't need that therapy. That's not somebody you need. That's right. That but if it's somebody that has an understanding of the word of God, yeah. and they can tell you wisdom based on the word, yeah. that'll help you. Mm -hmm. That will help you. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The word peace, the word for peace here is the word, the Greek word irony, which conveys, listen to this, conveys a range of meanings, including well-being, prosperity. Freedom from anxiety, safety from harm, and deliverance from enemies. Amen. That's the kind of peace. That's what God is talking about. It's not just, it's not just calm. See, sometimes God calms the storms in your life. Sometimes he calms you in the midst in of the your storm. Of and he gives you peace. Sometimes he lets you stay in that storm, but you've got peace. Amen. In the midst of that storm. It was raining, it was storming one day this week. But being in the house, you know, as long as you're in the house, you're good, right? You can look out the window, see it lighting. You can hear the thunder, you can hear the rain. But you have safety and shelter because you're inside. Right, see, right. we're in him. We are in, in him, him. him. And he gives us his peace, his irony. Yeah. I like what the message Bible says here. I'm almost done. The message Bible says in verse 6, don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Yeah. Instead of worrying, Pray. That's for somebody right there. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces, displaces worry at the center of your life. What's at the center of your life? Who's at the center of your life? Is it worry? Or is it Christ? Right. See, worry wants to push Christ out of the way. You need to make sure Christ is at the, at the center of your life. And that's right where now. prayer and yeah. praise and worship comes from. Right. Making right. priorities. I, I want to read this scripture to you from in 1 Peter 5 and 7. 1 Peter 5 and 7. You've heard this before. 1 Peter 5 and 7. I'm going to read it from the New International Version. It says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. You're probably familiar with the King James and James cast all your cares, casting all your cares. What is that? Anxiety. Anxiety. Cast it. When you cast something, you got any fishermen, fishermen in the house? When you cast something, you, you throw it out there, don't you? You can't go catch that hook. You got to let it. You'd be stupid to try to go out there and catch that hook. You're going to get up probably. You throw that, you cast that line out there, 
And you let it go. That's, that's your prayer. That's your anxiety. When you're feeling anxious, God, I'm going to cast this on you in prayer. Right. I'm going to praise you. That's casting your care. That's the first thing you need to do. I'm giving you keys here to live free from anxiety. The first thing is cast your care on God. Amen. You do this through a life of prayer. Amen. Listen, care and prayer are as mutually opposed as fire and water. Mm. You know how fire and water are on opposites? Care and prayer are opposites. Either you're going to carry the care or you're going to go to God in prayer. Amen. Which one are you going to do? Which one are you going to do? You're going to go to God in prayer or you're going to carry the care? So cast the care on God. Here's the second thing. Maintain the proper spiritual focus. In Matthew 6 and 33, you're familiar with it. Uh, Jesus says that, to, that we're to seek the kingdom first. In other words, make his kingdom, his way of doing things, top priority in our lives. See, your priorities need to be in balance. That's why many people are anxious now. Because they, their priorities are out of whack. So you got to make sure your priorities are in place. God first. Yes, sir. And, and God, that, and that doesn't always mean church. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm going to move on. All right. Sometimes, y'all know that there are people in ministry that are, that are anxious and, mm. and, and taking sleeping pills and stressed out. Because right, priorities are out of the way. They made ministry the center and not God. That's not another God. subject right there. Yeah. Maintain a proper spiritual focus. Put your priorities in place. Third thing, refuse to take the care. Matthew 6 and 34, after, after Jesus said to seek first the kingdom of, of, of God and his righteousness, he said, take no thought for tomorrow. Uh -huh. But tomorrow will take care of the things of yourself. You know what? You can take the thought. The enemy can, is going to present you a thought. It's up to you to say, no, I don't want that. I'm not trying to take that thought. That's a thought that's not of God. And you're trying to get me stressed and anxious and, 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 and worried. He said, take no thought. Mm -hmm. Don't take the thought. You can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from building a nest in your head. Mm -hmm. Don't take the thought. Take no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of things of itself. Sufficient is the day. Sufficient is the evil of that day. It will take care of itself. So refuse to take the care. Somebody say, I refuse to take the care. I refuse to take the care. Here's the fourth thing, the last thing. And, and, and this, is, this is a prophetic word. I'm going to give you all a prophetic word. You've never heard this before. I need you to write this down. Write this down. Write this down. <laughs> okay. Prophetic word. You've never heard this before. Four letters. Write this down. Are y'all ready? M Y O B. <laughs> You never heard that before. I tell you a prophetic word right there. Mind your own business. That's what that stands for. Some people are anxious because they're in other folks' business. But if you mind your own business, y'all thought I was there. So I'm just having fun, right? I'm getting, mind your own business. TNT. Okay, be a scripture. Philippians 2 and 12, Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's scriptural. Mind your own business. Start of the start of the Grown children that's getting testimony. That's what they're doing. They're gaining testimonies out there acting a fool. Gaining testimonies. Mind your own business. That, that's okay. That's junior now. I don't let them go. I train them in the, the things of God. I train them in the way that I should train them. They're on their own now. Gaining testimonies. I'm minding my own business right here in my house. Keeping my business. Guess what? I'm going I'm to I'm 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 mess with the married people now. Your spouse's business. <laughs> You're not responsible for, for what your spouse does. Amen. All <laughs> the married folk out there. You, you, can't, you can't control them. No. You're not responsible for what they do. What Frank not doing. <laughs> what Frank should be doing. Then you look on, on, on social media and, 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 and uh, uh, I'm trying to think of her name. Dorica's uh, husband I took her to, uh, to Bermuda, Bahamas, and your husband won't even take you to Galveston. <laughs> you get all anxious and, 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 and upset at, in your marriage. Mind your business. Somebody say, mind your business. Mind, your business. mind you do your part, and that's all you can. That's all you can do. 
minding your business. I, I, I be, I, I'm being silly, but, but I say this seriously. We can save ourselves some anxiety by tending to our own business yes, and being sir. focused Amen. on priorities. Yes, it's in the verse and whatever God calls me to do, I'm going to be focused on that. What they doing over there? That's not my business. That's none of my business. That's not my what they doing over there? That's none of my business. Right. Even what they say about me, what you say about me, that's none of my business. That's right. Mind your business. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, we we got to we got to really just trust God for the results in our life. So God wants you to live carefree. It's one of the reasons why Jesus came. It's one of the reasons why he died. One of the reasons why he rose so that we might live a life of freedom. Remember John 8, 36. He said in his word, Jesus said, he said, the son uh, whom the son sets free is free indeed. You think he was just talking about freedom from sin? No, he was talking about freedom from anxiety, freedom from anything yeah. that is going to hinder you from being who God has called you to be. Jesus has come to set you free. Yes, Believe sir. that today. Yes, if you sir. have been dealing with anxiety yes, in your sir. life, yeah. make sure your priorities are together. Casting your cares on him. Living a life of prayer when your priorities are together. Refusing to take the care. Mind your own business. But at the end of the day, you got to say, God, I thank you for Jesus Christ who has set me free. I am free. Somebody say, I'm free today. I'm free. We celebrate freedom tomorrow, July 4th. And I know some people got some issues with the country right now, some issues with America. You know, they say, I'm free-ish. You know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, especially millennials. That's the stuff, some of the stuff they say, I'm free-ish. Okay, whatever. Tomorrow we celebrate freedom. But there is no freedom. Like being free in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Anybody free today in Jesus Christ? You say, I'm free today. Yeah. No more shackles. No more chains. No more bondage in my life. I'm not going to be bound. I am going to be free today. I want to live free. Uh, I'm going to live free in Jesus Christ. That's why he died for us. Yeah. That's why he rose from the dead. Oh, yeah. So that we could be free. Yes, he sir. has overcome the world. Yeah. The world and everything in it. That means anything that could anything that could come your way, it's already been dealt with. Right, when he rose and he said, when he died on the cross and said, it is finished. But then when he rose from the dead, he got your victory. Yeah. He rose with your victory. Yeah. He rose with your victory today. Amen. 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 Let's just lift our hands to the Lord today. And let's just thank him, God. Let's just, let's just thank God that we're free. Somebody say, I am, I am free. I am free. I am free in Jesus Christ. No more chains. Hold it me. I'm no longer bound. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. No more chains holding me. My spirit, my soul is resting. That's peace. And it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, Hallelujah. I'm free today. I'm free. Anybody you may have been dealing with anxiety in your life, I want to pray a special prayer for you today. I want to pray a special prayer. Maybe somebody's watching at home and you've been struggling with anxiety. I want to pray for you. You heard what I said today. I, I, I'm going to pray for you. You need to take knowledge before the Lord and, and actually repent for, for at any time Allowing worry to get in the center of your life. Repent. Why did I say repent? Because Jesus said, take no thought for tomorrow. Right, he said, right. don't, don't worry about it. Why are you worrying about it? That's why you need to repent. Repent means go the opposite direction. God, I'm sorry. Forgive me for a worry. And then change your direction. I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm going to put it in your hands. And you know what? Some things, if it doesn't happen now, okay, God, that's it. It's okay. God, I think it is going to happen at some point. If it's in your will, if it's not, right, I think right. that you're going to need it another time. Sometimes we're trying to force things to happen, force things to happen, trying to make things happen, and God is just not in it. Or maybe it's not the time for it, and that causes anxiety. So I'm going to pray for you today. Those of you that's at home, you put it in the, in the comment section, in the chat section. I'm free today. I'm free. I'm free from anxiety. I am free from worry. 
Let's pray. Father God, I thank you today. I thank you, God, for the word that has gone forth. I thank you that it will not return forth, but will accomplish what you sent it to accomplish, and it will prosper in the thing which you sent it to prosper in. Thank you, God, that our strength has been, our, our faith has been strengthened. We've been challenged. We've been changed by your word today. We are free. Not because we say it. Not just because it's something that sounds good as we say it out of our mouth. But because your word says that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So we thank you, God. We thank you for freedom. I thank you, God. Somebody may be struggling. May have been struggling with anxiety in their life. To the point where it's crippling them. It's robbing them of the life that you have for them. It's sapping them of energy, sapping them of life. I pray that this word will stick, God, in that every seed planted, that, that you will water the seeds that have been planted today. And I thank you for freedom. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed. And that includes anxiety. Who the sun sets free from anxiety is free. I pray freedom right now and victory and deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Amen. And listen, if you are here or maybe you're watching and you have not accepted Christ into your life, that's the first thing. That's the first thing you need to do. It's a fact. I say it almost every week. It's a fact that a man named Jesus walked the face of the earth. People don't argue that. But this was not just an ordinary man. Yes, sir. He wasn't just an ordinary man. He wasn't a good man, you know, just a good man, a good teacher, a prophet. No, he was all God. Yes, he was all God and all man to bring man and God together again. He is the bridge, the go-between. He said that we can put our trust in him. He said, I am the way, not a way. He said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Listen, all religions make an attempt to get to God. It's like going up steps. You can imagine trying to go up steps to get to God. That's what all religions are trying, what all religions are trying to do. The difference with Christianity is that God came down the steps. Yes, sir. Right. Isn't that beautiful? God came down the steps to be like us. So now that he's come down the steps, he said, I can take you up with me and now we can be one together. Yes, sir. And maybe you need today. And you have not accepted him into your life. This is your opportunity. This is your moment right here. And it starts with a prayer. It starts with prayer. You can pray this prayer. You can repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you have raised Jesus from the dead. And he lives in my life. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you are a Christian. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Everybody's not a child of God. We're not all God's children. I, I know we like to think that. You hear people say, we're all God's children. No, we're not. We're all God's creation. Jesus said, Jesus told some people, he said, your father is the devil. There's some people, yeah, there's some people that's not God's children because they haven't accepted him. When we accept him, we become a part of his family. We are now children of God. And guess what? God loves you. God loves you. God has a plan for your life. And there are three things that will help you to walk this plan out. First of all, make a habit of reading the Bible. The B-I-B-L-E, basic instructions before leaving earth. It is God's word, his road map. It is how we understand who he is, understand his purpose, his will for our life. Make a habit of reading something from the Bible every day. Even if it was just five or ten minutes, start in the Gospel of John. That's an easy place to go. Second thing you need to do is make a habit of praying. I talk about praying in the message. Make a habit of praying. If you will do that, you will understand God even more. He will make some things more clear to you. Third thing you need to do is make sure you connect with a church family. I know that's not necessarily the popular thing right now, but that's scriptural. It's important for you to connect with other believers. And I know there's some that are watching uh, through New Beginning. Maybe you want to continue to connect. If you have never connected with New Beginning, Pastor Dave is an awesome man of God. He's a friend of mine. But I know that he's a man of God. He will teach the word of God. Some great people in this church. And maybe you're watching this through Gateway. There's a great pastor there too. I'm <laughs> 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 uh, so good. We'd love to have you a part of our church family. Get connected. Maybe you're out of town somewhere. You can't come physically. 
get connected to a church. There's no excuse. There's no excuse for you not to be connected to a church family. And make sure you're con contributing your gifts and your talents, not just your uh, your time, but, but, but your presence, your participation. And that will help you to be the Christian that God has called you to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. I hope that you were encouraged today by the word. Amen. Hallelujah. Be anxious for nothing. For nothing. Amen. Amen. I think at this time, uh, we're ready to, is it communion? We don't receive communion? At this time? Offering? Okay. All right. Uh, I want to make sure that uh, we, we take our offering up today. Uh, I, I can't remember exactly how you all do it. Uh, but just remember, I, I want to say this. If you're going out to eat, you're buying yourself a meal, and you don't ever give to the house of the Lord, shame on you. Shame on you. Make sure you support the place where you're being spiritually fed. Amen. 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 Give your best offering. Preferably your tithes and your offering. Give your best. Amen. When we give it to Papa Do's, Landry's, what's one of the other places out there? Uh, Chili's, and you don't ever give to the house of the Lord. Uh, there's ministry going on, people are being fed, but there are other things that the ministry is doing to bless people in the community. And so your, your tithes, your offering is being, uh, it's like seed planted in good ground. And the word tells us that we will be blessed in the process. Amen. As we give, it's given unto us. Good measure, press down, shaking together, and running over. And so we know that our seed, our offering is going to bring a harvest in our lives. Amen. All right. Now, at the time, you uh, at the hands of the ushers. All right. Envelopes, if you need, uh, if you need an envelope. Just raise your hand, and one of the ushers will bring you an envelope. Uh, gateway, you know we give. We can give through Cash App. You can also give through Givelify. PayPal.me is another option. PayPal.me slash GCC Houston. Uh, what is the Cash App for New Beginning? I can't remember it. Zell. 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 Right, right. Zell. Lifting you can give it through Zell. Lifting.Jesus at Yahoo.com. Turning hearts. Lifting. Lifting hearts. Lifting. Yes, lifting, lifting hearts. Yes. Lifting that Jesus. Lifting that Jesus at Yahoo. Lifting that Jesus at Yahoo.com, right? Lifting that Jesus at Yahoo.com. Make sure you give, uh, as I said, your best offering, your tithes, and your offering today. Amen. Amen.
It is Communion Sunday. We pray a uh, blessing on those that gave today. Every offering, uh, every seed, we thank God that it is blessed and that you receive a harvest on what you see, what you've sown today, what you planted. It is Communion Sunday, and uh, I am somewhat familiar with how Pastor Davis does communion. Um, but we, we're gonna we're gonna make it work. We're gonna flow today. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I'm asking Brother Whitlock and and uh, the, you will come and assist me today. Participation that is reflection, reflecting on what he's done in our lives, and, and, and really thanking God that He is He has saved us, that we're part of His family. And we search ourselves. That's what the scripture says, and, and, and it says, let, let every man judge himself. For if we would judge ourselves, verse 31, we would not be judged. We're to search ourselves. Old saints used to say, search me, Lord. Yeah. If you find anything that's not like me, take it out. Strengthen me because I want to be right. I want to be made. I want to be well. I want to be whole. We search ourselves. We search ourselves and ask God to reveal anything in our lives that needs to be corrected. And, and you know, it talks about not taking this in a worthy manner. And I've seen at times people not feel like that they were worthy. Well, guess what? None of us are worthy. None of us are worthy. But His grace he made us worthy. And it invites us to the table. If that's the case, it, uh, I shouldn't be up here. But His grace invites us to the table. And so He says to us today, come. You think about who was at that table? You think about some of His disciples. Peter. Really, Peter. Peter was rough. Peter was a thug. He had Judas stealing from him. 
a thief right there at the table. They broke out an argument at the table. So if anybody shouldn't have been there, the disciples shouldn't have been there, but he said, come. And that's what he says to us today. He says, come. Come and take of my body. Take of my blood. Because you are in covenant with me. And I ask the urges to come at this time.
sisters will come at this time and collect the cups. Pass it to the center. Pass the cups to the center and the ushers will come and collect to the hands. Okay. Yes. Yeah. 